Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna to be doing a video that no one asked for. This is a comparison between the Fenty Eavesdrop Blurring Skin Tint and the Tarte C Hydroflex Serum Foundation. These are incredibly similar products, so I figured why not just do a comparison on each side of my face? Spoiler alert, I already have both of these on my face and filmed the demo in its entirety. So the Tarte is on this side, the Fenty is on this side. So if you wanna know my thoughts, keep on watching. But first, I would love if you'd subscribe for more minimal, easy makeup looks, product reviews, sunscreen stuff, no bullshit beauty, um, and my dog Thumper. So let's get into it. Just gonna give you a warning in advance. This is gonna be a very chaotic and disorganized video because this is totally unplanned. My day is packed with meetings and I can only film in like little increments of 15 minutes here and there. Uh, but that's just the nature of having a full-time corporate job and trying to balance YouTube. So let's do it. Before we get into the demo, we're just gonna talk about the differences between these products on paper. For example, the uh, Fenty Eavesdrop Blurring Skin Tint. That retails for $29.50. It comes in 25 shades and you get 1.08 fluid ounces for $29.50. Compared to the Tarte, this is obviously just a little mini size that they offer for a couple of the shades, but the regular size version, you get 1.01 ounces for $39. So this is 30 milliliters, this is 32 milliliters, the 30 milliliters is 39, the 32 milliliters is 29. So pretty big price difference there. The Tarte Hydroflex Serum Foundation comes in about 32 shades and they detail what the undertones are for each shade. So for example, I have 14N Fair Light Neutral and with the uh, Eavesdrop Blurring Skin Tint, they have about 25 shades. Um, I had a hard time finding my shade. This is not the right shade for me. Frankly, I don't think they offer one that really matches me, um, but they do say that it's so light coverage that one shade can kind of flex across a bunch of different shades in skin tones. So if you're just someone who kind of has a hard time finding the right undertones, you might want to check out the Tarte instead because they do have quite a few more options. In terms of the description of the finish for the products, the Fenty Blurring Skin Tint is described as a flexible skin tint, easy to apply, soft, blurred finish, light to medium coverage, hydrating but diffused effect, smooth texture, applies well with fingers or a brush, humidity, sweat, and transfer resistant formula. Okay, I don't, I don't agree with that. Anyways, it's like actually quite slippery. The Tarte, on the other hand, is described as uh, also a serum foundation that flexes with your skin, so they both say flex. This, however, is described as medium coverage, whereas Fenty is light to medium. Uh, the finish of the tart is described as natural, and it has hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and vegan collagen. And the texture is described as feather light with a natural finish, uh, feels like skin. Some ingredients in here that brighten, smooth, and hydrate, blah, 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 blah. Okay, whatever, I don't need skincare in my foundation. Let's move on. Really, if you're looking at the language of the descriptions on the website, these are basically described as the exact same thing. They both have like light to medium coverage. They both are described as being sort of flexible in the shades, uh, easy to apply with fingers, liquid consistency. The difference is that the Fenty says that it's blurring and the Tarte says that it helps with fine lines and wrinkles and hydration. So now let's get into the demo and I'll show you how they look on each side of my face. So here's the Fenty Eavesdrop Skin Tint in the shade two. You can see there's some thickness, some viscosity to it. It's not totally liquidy. And hopefully you can see as I'm blending it, it does start to set down. It's not super wet looking like most other like dewy foundations would be. On the right, we have the Tarte Serum Foundation, which is much runnier, much more liquidy. Um, and that's in 14N. Hopefully you can see as I'm blending it out, it definitely has a little bit more of a smoother, glossier finish. And look at on the left, the Fenty texture really just doesn't look so great on the skin versus the Tarte on the right, which looks a bit more smooth, a little bit more hydrated, whatever you want to call it. Um, on the left, again, you can see that the Fenty just looks a bit dry versus the Tarte on the right looks a lot more smooth. Let's get started with the application. First, I'm going to shake it up. This is the Fenty Ease Drops in uh, the shade two, and I'm just gonna show you how they both look on the back of my hand. 
you can see it has a serum uh, serum texture as described and I would say shade two is a tad light for me once it goes on my face and a little bit yellow uh, so it's not my ideal shade, whereas the Tarte Serum Foundation is in 14N Fairlight Neutral and looks like that. Uh, the Serum Foundation from Tarte is quite a bit more liquidy than the Fenty Eavesdrops. I would say the Fenty Eavesdrops have a viscosity and a thickness to them um, that make it a little bit different. You can see Fenty number two is a little lighter, a little more yellow. Fair Light Neutral from Tarte is a pretty perfect match for me. So I'm going to just maybe compare them um, on each side of my face. Let's start with Fenty Beauty on this side. I'm going to start with a few drops of it. You know, I don't think it's the kind of product that is meant to be applied quite heavily. Both of these, you know, are your classic light coverage kind of I think like modern updated glossier vibe kind of product but wow it's really hard to keep this to just one side of my face um there's something about my skin that gives me trouble with serum foundations and I'm hoping that you'll be able to see this as I start blending them out I'm not sure what it is. You know, this feels amazing. I'm sure that you've all seen so many reviews about the Fenty eavesdrops, but on some people, it looks incredible. On me, not so much. What I will say is it looks fantastic on camera. It looks really good from far away in the mirror. It blurs my skin. It feels nice. It's lightweight. Um, but up close, as I'm blending... It gives me texture I never knew I had. Like this, I'm hoping you can see all of that around my nose. I didn't have that before. You couldn't see that on my skin before. It just really gathers in places where I have texture. And, you know, I brought a brush, I brought my uh, little blender, and I just don't think that those work very well with the product. I do think that hands are the best way to go, at least for the uh, Fenty eavesdrops. And I would say that this is almost entirely blended now on this side of my face. So this has nothing and this has the Fenty Beauty eavesdrops in two. And I think you can see just from far away here, it evened out my skin tone. It is slightly mattifying and blurring. I will definitely give it that um, on the back of my hand. It's this one. And I think you can see, you know, it's not very dewy there's just kind of a natural finish to it but again you know it looks so nice from far away and then up close it just gathers and really i mean look at that do you see that look at all that texture it's emphasizing so i have to say i was really dreading filming this video and doing this application because i hate the eavesdrops so much but it's the kind of product where i could wear it on camera and people would say that my skin looks really nice so now let's take the Tarte uh, Serum Foundation in 14N Light Neutral, or Fair Light Neutral. And I'm just going to do the same thing. A little bit of a shade difference here, but they're so sheer, both of them, that I don't really think it's going to matter. Now, as I showed you on the back of my hand, um, the Tarte Serum Foundation is quite a bit more runny and liquidy, whereas the Fenty Beauty has some like viscosity to it. And I don't think that that really matters once it's on your face. Um, I kind of get the same issue with both of these, although I do have a preference for the Tarte, and I'll show you why. But you know what? I hope that one of you can weigh in. I know I have a lot of followers who are way more knowledgeable <laughs> about beauty and ingredients than I am. Why don't serum foundations work for me? I just have found that both of these, while they feel amazing, while they look great from far away on camera, they just emphasize texture I didn't know I had. I mean, these two products convinced me that I need a derma flash because I'm like, I have peach fuzz? Like, I feel like I have a mustache? Like, it's, it's bad. It really makes me feel ugly. <laughs> so here's what we're working with. Uh, Tarte on this side, Fenty on this side, Here's the finish of the Tarte. 
here's the finish of the Fenty. I'm not sure what the camera is going to pick up, but the Fenty, much more matte. And it has this kind of silicone-y feeling where it's a little slippery on the skin, you know? Like, it, it looks more matte, but it's slippery. It's definitely a little bit slippery. The Tarte has more of like a classic foundation finish. So out of the two of these, I certainly prefer the Tarte Serum Foundation um, just because it doesn't have as much of that like silicone-y slip that the Fenty has. Um, although I've seen a lot of people absolutely rave about this and I don't know how. <laughs> I don't find that either of them emphasize wrinkles. So I will say that if fine lines are your concern, I think this might be great for you. I don't know if you can see all in like the pores of my hairline. I don't, it's bizarre. It They emphasize texture I just didn't even know existed. Right here, I would say around my nose, the Fenty looks worse. I know that you can see that. That's pretty bad. The Tarte, I'm getting a little bit of that too. Really, it's collecting in my pores. Not looking so hot. You can see that they're both, even though they're totally different colors, on my face, looks exactly the same. They're really light coverage. So, you know, I think if you're worried about your shades, probably not that big of a deal. But I do love how these apply at first. I love the blendability. I love that you use fingers and it's just really easy. So I think what I would conclude about the textures of these is if you can go to a Sephora and you can get a sample, that's probably the best way to go. Both of these products are equally unflattering on my skin, which is why it's taken me so long to film this video because I've had these for months and I was just dreading having to put these on again. If I step back, I hope you can see my skin looks really nice. You know, they both have this kind of like semi blurring quality to them that makes them just really beautiful on camera while it doesn't really look like foundation. But then up close, not so hot. I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup and then I will show you how everything lays on top of them. All right, unfortunately you did not get to see what all of my makeup looked like when it was freshly applied, but you did see what both foundations look like right after I put them on my face. This is four hours later. Uh, as you can see, not so, so, so bad. Coverage completely wore off around my chin and my cheek on the tart side. Same over here, but I think this lasted a little bit longer, um, which would make sense because it's a little bit more matte than the Tarte and this had a little bit more viscosity. So I think that makes sense, but otherwise I'm seeing pretty much exactly the same longevity and the same look. You know I'm not gonna ever water down my true thoughts. Uh, I think I look like shit right now. Um, I'm trying the new Fit Glow mascara and I think it's been a little bit smudgy just under this eye. I hated the way that my skin looked with these foundations. It made my concealer look incredibly heavy. So I ended up kind of like rubbing it out. So now kind of everything's moved around. I feel like I look my worst right now. <laughs> so the foundations are definitely partly to blame for that. However, I don't think that they're bad products. I just don't think that they work for me. And here's why. I've noticed a trend with the way that certain formulas perform on my skin. Uh, if you go back and watch my color science sunscreen video, you will see the exact same thing. And with both of these foundations and with the color science uh, sunscreens, as well as a couple other sunscreens with a very thin serum -y texture, I get the same thing across the board. I get this almost like mustache like texture. I get this kind of clogged looking effect around my nose things end up looking maybe a little bit crusty throughout the day and that's just how anything that's kind of like a liquidy serum type of texture performs on my skin so now i know to avoid serum foundations and to avoid serum like sunscreens because across the board i'm having this issue so i don't want to discourage people from buying these although i would add a little disclaimer that you know Maybe you want to try something with that kind of serum like texture first to see if you like it And then if that works, maybe all of these will work for you So I would love if anyone who has a better understanding of formulas like cosmetic chemists or someone in the skincare industry If you could tell me why I might be experiencing this issue with 
you know, these kind of like runny textures for foundations and sunscreens, definitely let me know because I'm super curious. Um, I've seen friends use both of these and they look absolutely incredible and flawless and they just slightly blend it with their fingers and looking like amazing. That ain't me. <laughs> it is what it is. So my conclusion is that neither of these products work for me, but they might work for you. They both come in a beautifully robust range of shades. They're both easy to apply. They feel great on the skin and they're both available at Sephora. So maybe if you can go to Sephora and get a sample of them, that would be your best bet. Although Sephora does have a great return policy if that's your jam. That's it for me. Sorry for the laundry in the back. I have a crazy work day. I can't believe I even got the time to film this video. I look like absolute dog shit with this makeup right now. So I'm gonna go wash this all off and I hope to see you next time.